OK, so if you have an exponent that's just like 5 or something, no problem. We know what to do. We just multiply that thing out 5 times. If we have an exponent of like negative 5, we know what to do too. We just take a reciprocal and we have 1 over that thing 5 times. But what happens if we actually have an exponent that's neither negative nor positive in terms of being an integer, but it may be something like a fraction, like a half? Well, it turns out that leads to something radical. So let's take a look and see exactly what fractional exponents are. Well, again, the thing to do is to always reason and think through it. By memorizing a whole bunch of formula, you can see that you know, for this kind of course, the material here just goes on and on and on. And you go crazy. If you try memorizing every single thing, something really important like your birthday or telephone number, boom, it'll just fly right out. So you don't want to do that. You want to try to understand the stuff and then always have it at your disposal. OK, so let's take a look at a really simple example. Let's take a look and see if we can figure out what 9 to the 1 half power would be. What does it mean to multiply 9 by itself a half times. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, it's going to be some positive number. I just don't know what that positive number is. So it's sum, so it equals sum positive number. I'll write numb in case you're getting numb. <laughs> a little joke there. But we don't know what it is. Well, here's a neat way of thinking about what that should be. Let's use the other laws that we've already developed with respect to exponentiation and see if we can make a guess. For example, what if I took that number, that mystery number, that thing that we don't know what it is, and I squared it? Well, let's see what happens. If I were to square it, we're now going to use one of the properties of exponents that we already talked about. Namely, if you have something to a power and then raise the whole thing to that power, what do you do with these guys? You multiply. So if I were to multiply those together, I would see 9 and I would see 1 half times 2, which is 2 over 2, which equals 9 to the 1, which is a fancy way of saying 9. So what do I see? I see that this mystery number, the thing I don't know, has the property that when I square it, I get 9. Now, can you think of a positive number that has the property that when I square it, I get 9? Well, I can. 3. So in fact, this number must be 3. Neat. So what's going on here? How does 3 relate to 9? Well, now you can sort of see it. 9 to the 1 half is that number which, when I square it, I get 9. So therefore, this thing must be the square root of 9. Aha! So what that says is that 9 to the 1 half actually is the same thing as the square root of 9. So what do fractional exponents lead to? They actually lead to roots, taking the roots of something. And we just discovered that with this simple example, and that's an easy way for you to remember this stuff. So let's take a look now at this thing in general. What we have here is the following. If I take a and I raise it to the 1 over n power, what that means is I'm taking the nth root of a. So that's the number that I have to have in which if I multiply it by itself n times, I'll get back to a. That's what the nth root is. See? Nth root. OK, so now let's just try a whole bunch of examples and, um, and see if you can sort of start getting into it. Getting into it. Why don't you sort of get into these roots? So for example, let's take a look at 8. This is one of my favorites, by the way, just in case you're wondering. To the 2 thirds. 8 to the 2 thirds power. What do you do? Well, that fraction now is a top and a bottom. So it looks really, really threatening. Here's what I do. I break it up into two pieces, the 2 part and then the 1 third part. And what I do, just to make things easy, is write it like this. 8 to the 1 third times 2. Notice that's just 2 thirds. But now I can use the laws of exponents we already saw. And if I have a product of exponents, that means I've got something to a power all raised to a power. So I could write it like this. 8 to the 1 third power all to the 2 power. Now what do I do here? Well, now I've got to take the 1 third power means I'm taking a root, and in this case, the cube root. So you could write it like this, by the way, if you'd like. 
Now, what's the cube root of 3? That might be one that you figured, well, I don't know, I don't know. But if we think about it, let's see. I need a number so that when I multiply it by itself three times, bump, 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 I get 8. And actually, 2 works quite nicely. 2 times 2 times 2 would be 8. So in fact, this number is 2, but then I've got to square it. And so I see this answer turns out to be 4. So 8 to the 2 thirds power turns out to be 4. Pretty cool. So these are how I deal with exponents when I see them. Let's try another one. For example, let's try 25 to the 1 half. Here's a great mistake. Here's a great mistake. This one is one of my favorites. Someone might say, you know what? Exponents and the switching and the flipping, you know what I do? I'm going to flip this thing and say that. Don't you think that's a great mistake? I think that is a terrific mistake. They're flipping, they're thinking. This person really is thinking a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, that thought processes are sort of, you know, in their synapses there. It's all a little knotted up. We need to bring some clarity to this. To flip, what would you need? You'd need a negative sign. So in fact, this thing is really 25 to the negative 2. That's not a half. It's negative 2. A half in the exponent means I'm taking some kind of root, in this case a square root. This is a great mistake. In fact, this mistake makes it on my top 10 list. In fact, this is number 5. Number 5. See, number 5, fractional exponent mistake. And that's when people take a fractional exponent and somehow write it like this, like an inversion to invert it. So always remember, don't flip over roots. Right? Don't do that. OK. So how would you do this? Well, this is just simply saying, take the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So there you go. Not a big deal. Let's try an even more exotic one. Suppose I tell you, I want you to figure out what the square root of 2 is multiplied by the cube root of 2. What in the world would that equal? Well, it seems a little tricky at first, but the secret is, and here's what I do, I always convert everything to the exponential notation and then combine the exponents in some easy way. And that way, all those little root things, I mean, it's sharp, it's pointy, you hurt yourself, not good. But if you have exponents, they're happy, they're happy. So let me show you how this would go. I'd write this as 2, and I'm taking the square roots, so that'd be to the 1 half power. And I multiply that by 2, and here I'm taking the cube root of 2, which would be to the 1 third power. I have the same base, so what do I do with the exponents? You have to remember the principle, and if you don't remember the principle, just write down a simple example. And what you would see is you add the exponents. So I have to take 1 half and add it to 1 third. And what does that equal? Well, that would be 2 to the 5 divided by 6. How do I do that so fast? I had to get a common denominator. So I multiply top and bottom here by 3, top and bottom here by 2. So I've got 3 plus 2, 5 over 6. Bing! There's the answer. So you could leave this as the answer if you were so inclined. Or you could be um, really interesting and write it with radicals, right? If you're sort of radical. In fact, if you're, maybe, this is the maybe this is the conservative way of expressing the answer. But if you're sort of more radical, then what would you do? Well, that 6 means tells me what root I'm taking. So that would be the sixth root of 2. And then I raise the whole thing to the fifth power. That's the 5 on top. Now, there's another way of writing that, if you were so inclined. You could say, well, I'm going to take 2 and raise it to the fifth power. And then I'll take the sixth root of all of that. And in fact, these two things are the same. So notice the difference here. First, I'm taking 2 and raising it to the fifth power, taking that answer and sixth rooting it. And in the second way, or the first way, I should say, first I took the sixth root and then raised it to the fifth power. Those things are actually both the same, and either one works. In fact, this is an example of a very general principle, which I'd like to write down for you. And the general principle is the following. If you take the nth root of a number and then raise that to the mth power, I could write that as a fractional exponent as a to the what over what. Well, m is the power. And n is the root. Do you see how the root goes in the denominator? The power is on the numerator of the fraction of the exponent. And now you can de de decode it and write it the other way. And you can write this as a to the m, and then take the nth root of all that. Doesn't make a difference. 
Both answers are correct, so whatever's easiest for you. Sometimes, by the way, I'll tell you what I think. I think this is easier because taking roots makes numbers smaller, and then small numbers are easier to raise to powers. That's just me because I'm feeble. Um, let me show you now um, another quick example. Let's try to simplify this. Let's take 3x to the minus 1 half power. How can I rewrite that? Well, there's a couple things going on here. There's a fraction, but there's also a negative sign. Let's deal with the negative sign first. Remember, negative sign flips. So in fact, this flips this over. And so I have the quantity 3x. Now I got rid of the negative sign, but I still have the 1 half. What does 1 half do? Square root. So I could write this as 1 over the square root of 3x. So there's a nice way of writing this sort of awkward looking thing in terms of roots that are maybe a little more familiar to you. Or vice versa. We could go from here and go backwards and write it like this. Either one. OK, one last example, and we'll call it a day. Oh, actually, you know, I'm going to do one before. It's a little, just a little teaser. Let me give you a chance to do this one. In fact, this lets, in fact I'll let you try this. Minus 25 raised to the 1 half power. I'm going to give you a second right now to try this. Go ahead. <laughs> 